Hi everyone, welcome to this Power BI Retail Analytics Workshop organized by Dubstack and Design Buddies. Today, we're going to be building interactive data visualizations that are going to deliver insights to a startup that's selling goods on Amazon.com. As part of this, we're going to be building bar charts, line charts, as well as scatter plots that provide you with insights. And we're going to conclude by building a full stack dashboard where a user can select a specific product and then go ahead and gain insights such as the quantity ordered by time, quantity ordered by state, as well as the quantity ordered by product size. So I'd like to welcome you. Hello, my name is Joshua and I've been teaching Microsoft Power BI since the last six years. I began my journey teaching at the Indian School of Management and Entrepreneurship. After that, I taught for Dubstech at the University of Washington. And I've also gone ahead and taught for the Information School at the University of Washington, Seattle. And most recently, I've been teaching on Zoom for a variety of different organizations, including the University of Texas at Austin. And last autumn, I conducted a data visualization certificate program in which more than 107 students learned Tableau as well as Microsoft Power BI. And this has inspired me to make a whole bunch of new workshops. And I'm super excited to have you today in this session. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce you to Ria who is a stakeholder for today. She sells Indian ethnic wear on Amazon and has a catalog of over 100 plus products. Over the last three months, she has been collecting data on her sales for each of her products. However, when she's exported this data from Amazon.com into Microsoft Excel, she's realized that there are over 100,000 plus rows and they cannot answer questions for her such as, what are the sales for a specific product? or what are the sales over time for a specific product, or what are the most popular sizes, or which states tend to be ordering a specific product. Or maybe she just wants to see the total orders by time. She cannot get these simple insights because of the fact that there are over 100,000 rows for scan in Excel, and she doesn't have the expertise to also work with this kind of data. So what she needs is an easy way to understand her data to gain insights that can help her with her decision making. So in short, she wants to go from something like this, which is a long Excel spreadsheet, to something a little bit more visual, like a data visualization or multiple data visualizations. For example, out here, she can select a specific product and then go ahead and see how the quantity order is changed by time, by state, as well as by product size. In addition to that, she can also interact with it, as you can see, as she clicks on different parts of the visualization and the drop downs and the filters, you see it immediately update. So that gives her a lot more insight as compared to, let's say, a spreadsheet with over 100,000 plus rows. Now she's come to you specifically to build her business analytics report. So she trusts you and she says, what tools should we use? And you go ahead and recommend to her Microsoft Power BI. You tell her Power BI is the best tool in the market for this according to the 2022 Gartner Magic Quadrant for Analytics and Business Intelligence Platforms report. And as you can see out here, you tell her it's leading the pack, right? By a mile, in fact, it's a market leader. It just leaves everyone behind. And she's really impressed by this tool and she says, what can you build with it? Do you have any examples of what people have built with it in the past? And you're like, yes, there are actually a few examples already out there of retail analytics reports built with Power BI. And you show her a few. So you show her this grocery store retail analytics report built with Power BI. You go ahead and show her this international sales report built with Power BI. And you also show her this other report, which is for a skateboard store, also another retail analytics report. So you've shown her that Power BI has been used in such a space before and you build her trust for the same thing. And once you've done that, she's really impressed and she goes ahead and says, go build it. And she then tells you what insights she wants. So what are the insights that she wants? So specifically, the insights that she desires are, what are the sales for each category? What is the relationship between the unit selling price and the quantity for each product? What are the total orders received by time and for a specific product style, what is the total quantity sold over time? What is the total quantity sold by state and city? What is the total quantity sold by size? And what are the total sales, average unit price and average like units sold for this particular product? Now, these insights are desired by her, but you don't immediately go into Power BI and build it. And the specific reason you don't want to do that is because building anything in Power BI is going to take you a lot more time as compared to, let's say, doing something on paper, which is basically sketching. Why? Sketching on paper takes you maybe five minutes to make a plan. You can get feedback from your stakeholder and then design in Power BI, which may, may take you maybe five minutes worth of work on paper, may take you maybe 20 to even an hour, 20 minutes to an hour per se in Power BI. 
So you get down to sketching and you start by sketching the dashboard for the first question, which is what are the sales for each category? So what do you go ahead and design? You say, we want to use a bar chart because we want to compare the sales for each category. So when you want to compare values over multiple categories, a bar chart is the most appropriate chart to make. So note that as a best practice, okay? That's a quick tip. In addition to that, you've also provided some nice slices on the side. So the user can go ahead and say they only want to see data for a specific state or for a specific time period. For the next question of what is the relationship between quantity ordered and average unit selling price for each product, you've gone ahead and decided to make a scatter plot. Why are we making a scatter plot out here? Because when you want to see the relationship between two measures, basically two numeric quantities, okay, you want to use a scatter plot. So you want to see the relationship between these two measures, right? Which is quantity and average unit selling price. You want to see the relationship between them and hence you make a scatter plot. So you've gone ahead and you've designed it so that you can now see is basically, is it possible that, you know, the average unit selling price as it increases, as the quantity ordered increase, what's the basically the best, you know, optimized um, unit average unit selling price based on quantity. You can get some unique insights as you start to analyze the data. It really depends on the scatter plot patterns you start to see. So we'll be analyzing that today. In addition to that, we have what are the total orders by time. For that, we'll be going ahead and building a line chart to explore how the total orders have changed over time. Why are we building a line chart? It's because it's the most appropriate chart to build when you want to see how a value has changed over a specific time period, whether it be a few days, a few months, or maybe a few years. Line charts are always used for that. That's why the stock market, when you're looking at those charts, you'll always notice they're line charts, okay? And what you've also said is when, when someone hovers over a specific point on this line chart, there'll be a nice tooltip that tells you not only the total orders, but also the total orders for each category. So I'll be teaching you this really great feature of Power BI today where you can make this advanced tooltip. It's not something a lot of people usually cover, so I'm really excited to show it to you. And in addition to that, you also will be building a table where you'll say, what are this, uh, what's the basic uh, status for each of your orders? So you can see the total shipped orders, your total orders that have been delivered, canceled, returned, and so on. And then for the last question or the last insight per se required, which is actually multiple insights, you've gone ahead and decided to basically say you're gonna provide multiple data visualizations. Why is that? There are multiple questions that are being asked, right? For example, what is the total quantity sold over time? You wanna see something how and how it's changed over time? Line chart, right? So we have a line chart out here. What is the total quantity sold by state? We have a tree map out here. Why are we using a tree map? A tree map is just like a bar chart it's again great for, you know, comparing categories against each other. So in this case, our states are our categories. So when you want to compare the values for states, you know, we can use a tree map. Even a bar chart could be used, but I'll be showing you as we progress in why a bar chart may not be the most ideal chart to use in this scenario. And last, we also want to go ahead and see the quantity by size. In this case, we don't have too many like different like sizes. So, you know, we are using a bar chart to basically see the quantity sold for each size. So that's what you've gone ahead and designed on paper and you show it to Ria and Ria says, yes, I'm really impressed. Go ahead and build it. So she's approved your design. Now, usually if you're working with a client, to be honest, they may ask for a few revisions, obviously because they know what they need. In this case, just for the purpose of the workshop, we're assuming that the initial design got approved. Okay. It's always great to test these designs with the actual people who will be using the dashboard and collecting their feedback because that way you can make the tweaks that are required versus going and building it in Tableau or in Power BI and then realizing that, oh, we did not make the right thing. So today we're going to be building this entire, like, you know, four sketches in Power BI. But before we go ahead and get started with building our Amazon retail sales report for a fashion startup, what I want you to do is I want you to understand our data. So let's go ahead and take a look at our data right here. As you'll notice, we have a lot of columns in front of us, okay? Now we have order ID, products, SKU, product style ID, product category, product size, quantity ordered, and so on. I'm going to explain to you what each of these critical columns mean. What is order ID? Let's say a user goes on to amazon.com and places an order. That order gets a unique ID. That's the order ID. Okay. What's product SKU? That's a product stock keeping unit. So let's say someone has gone ahead and ordered a white t-shirt in Excel, basically extra large size. That's going to have its own unique product SKU. So you see out here, 
This is the product style. So maybe that white t-shirt is this, this JNE2032, all the way up to 205, that's the product style per se. And then after that, you have that XL, that's the size, okay? Now also you can have other kinds of variants. So you'll see out here the style ID only ends at 2032, but you have this KR205. Those could be like, you know, materials or the colors and so on. So the stock keeping unit is usually the ID of a specific product, okay? The product style ID is just the overarching style ID, right? So white t-shirt is one style ID. Cool. Uh, let's say denim blue jeans with, uh, let's say metallic designs on it. That's another style ID, but you'll have multiple SKUs because you'll have multiple sizes, multiple tiny variants, maybe the material, the finish and so on. Then you have product category. What's product category? The category the product belongs to. Like if you have like, let's say a white t-shirt that would belong to a t-shirt category. In this case, the product belongs to the kurta category. Then we also have product size. That's the size of the, you know, the item ordered. So let's say large, small, medium. That's pretty straightforward. Quantity ordered. How much of this particular item was ordered per se, right? Maybe one, two, three, and so on. And then we also have sales, okay? And your sales are basically the total like cost paid by the customer for that order. So let's say, you know, they've, uh, not for that order, for that set of items per se in that order. So let's say they've gone ahead and, you know, ordered a kurta in that order. That costs them 301 rupees. If they ordered two of those, it would be 602 rupees instead. In addition to that, you have the order status, which is whether the order was delivered or cancelled and so on. And then the state in which the order was placed from, the where, where it has to be shipped to, not where it was placed from, where it has to be shipped to, the shipment type, and so on. We have a few other extra columns which are pretty straightforward, but these are the main columns. Now, what I want you to also understand is that all your products that come or let's say a person went and made an order on amazon.com and let's say they ordered like one white t-shirt one pair of blue jeans one pair of socks each of those items gets its own row okay it's not all one row because those are three different products so each set of items purchased in an order is one row so even if i place one order for one white t-shirt one pair of blue jeans one pair of socks, those are three individual rows. Take note of that. Now, you've gone ahead and understood your data. So let's go ahead and now use it in Microsoft Power BI. If you haven't already, please go ahead and set up Power BI on your computer. I provided you with these instructions on the data visualization website. You can also visit this website. It's a public URL. So just go to bit.ly slash class 23 I've also put the link in the description so that you can quickly access it. In addition to that, if you've not already gone ahead and downloaded the data set, please go ahead and do so. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is you need to go to the class website. I'm going to show you how. So let's say go to the class website, select the workshop, which is Retail Analytics with Microsoft Power BI. Once you do that, go ahead and download the data set from this link out here. It's basically going to open up a Google Sheet. The Google Sheet has all the rows for the orders which we received. And what you want to go ahead and do is you want to download the data from this Google Sheet. So to download it, what you need to do is click on File in the top left-hand corner. Once you click on File, go ahead and select the Download option and download this file as a CSV file. What is a CSV file? It's a comma separated values file. It's a commonly used file format for, you know, like data sets which you're downloading from the internet. Usually you'll see CSV files, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on Download as CSV. It's going to take, let's say, maybe 20 seconds to just give me a pop-up window. So let's give it 20 seconds. Okay, less than 20 seconds. So you've got a pop-up window. It's asking us, where do you want to save it? I'm going to go ahead and save it on my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Retail Analytics Workshop. And I'm going to save it inside of this folder. Now, you can do the same thing. You can save it on your desktop in a special folder. Or you can directly just download it into your downloads folder. That's also completely fine. Now, once you've gone ahead and done that you need to go to the Power BI website. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an incognito window. And I'm just going to type in powerbi.com. As soon as you do that, it's going to go ahead and ask you to enter your email so that you can check if you already have an account or if you need to create a new account. Now, I already have an account, so I'm just going to use that email address, which is dubstech at uw.edu. I'll click on submit. And now it's going to ask me to enter my password. Hopefully I've got that right. Now click on yes. Now, it's gone ahead and loaded up my Power BI home screen. 
On this home screen, you basically can view all your recently created reports. If you don't see any recently created reports, don't worry. That's most likely because of the fact that you've not made anything before this. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and get started with creating our report. So come to the left side navigation bar and click on the create button because we need to create a report. Once you click on the create button, you'll see that your screen refreshes and asks you to add data to get started. And it gives you two options. What are the options? It says paste or manually enter data or pick a published data set. Now we are going to not select either of these options. Neither of these are going to be selected. Instead, what we want to do is we want to click on this option out here called try these options. Why am I doing that? Because the data set we are working with is a CSV file. We're not going to paste or manually enter data, nor are we going to pick a published data set. So we are going to go ahead and click on try these options. And once we do that, it's going to say add data, get started. And now we see the option for CSV. So we'll click on the CSV option. And once you do that, a pop-up will appear and it's going to ask you to select a file. Now, where are you going to select your file from? You need to select your file from your own computer. So look at the bottom left corner of this pop-up, which says browse this device. Go ahead and click on it. And once you do that, it's going to trigger a pop-up. So I'm going to go to my desktop where I'd saved this. I'd saved it in a folder called Retail Alex Workshop. I'm going to go ahead and now select my file. And I'm going to give it approximately a minute to import in. So it's importing in. Now, my data has imported inside of Microsoft Power BI. The next step I need to take is I need to create a report with this data. So how do I do this? Look at the central tile out here, the center tile basically. Click on the option which says create a report. So it says visualize this data. So just click on the button which says create a report out here. And once you do that, you're going to select the option which says start from scratch. Why? We're making a report from scratch. So just go ahead and select start from scratch. And once you've gone ahead and completed this, you'll now be in a brand new Power BI report, okay? Now, the first step I'm going to take is going to sound rather counterintuitive. You're going to be like, oh, Zashra may give me, you know, or may teach me how to make the first visualization. But no, Zashra is going to teach you one of the most important things of working with Microsoft Power BI online, which is you got to keep saving your work. So step one is you got to save your work to save your file. I know it's blank, but you want to get into the habit. So go ahead and save your file. Click on Control S or Command S and then just give your file a name. I'm going to go ahead and call this Amazon Retail Analytics Report, February, what's today's date? 21st, 2023. I'm going to click on save. And now my report has saved. I want you to get in the habit of always saving your work as you make progress through. It's super important because you can always lose your internet connection midway and you don't want to lose all of that progress. Okay, so get into this habit of saving immediately. Now, once you've done that, you'll notice the view immediately got refreshed you would have seen a few extra panels on the right hand side which have disappeared. What's basically happened is when you save your file for the first time in Power BI, what it does is it takes you out of the edit view and takes you into only the view where you can just view the work. So what we want to do is we want to get back into the edit view. To do this, click on the edit button in the top center part of the bar. So you see this edit button? Click on it. If you do not see it, click on these three dots out here and you'll see the edit button up there. Now I'm going to click on edit. And once I click on edit, you'll see I've got the visualizations and data panel back, which had disappeared temporarily. Now let's go ahead and understand the Microsoft Power BI interface in front of us. The central screen, which you see out here is our canvas. That's basically your page, okay? Then on the right hand side, you have three critical panels. You have the filters panel. The filters panel basically is a place where you can go ahead and decide what data you want to see. So maybe you want to filter out data. You don't want to see data for maybe the month of March or maybe the month of June or July. You can go ahead and use the filters panel to say, do not show data from June, do not show data from July. Or whatever you want to filter out, you can just set those filters from the filters panel. Now you have the visualizations panel. What is the visualizations panel? The visualizations panel is from where you go ahead and decide what visualization you want to make. You'll see we have a ton of different data visualizations we can make from here. So we can make bar charts, line charts, we can make maps, we can go ahead and make slicers, which I'll be talking more about. We can go ahead and make cards, we can make multi-row cards. We can also go ahead and make uh, tree maps. So I'm going to be covering all of this today as we progress through, but that's what your visualizations panel is used for. It's used to create visualizations and then modify the way they look and also to enter the data that they need to show. Now the last or the rightmost panel is the data panel. 
this is the panel from where you can see all the fields or aka your columns of your data. So what are the columns that we have? We have columns such as city, order ID, order date, order month, order status, order year, you know, quantity ordered sales in INR, sales in USD. That's basically, you know, INR is Indian rupee, USD is United States dollar. We have shipment fulfilled, shipment type, state, year, and so on. So we have a lot of columns on hand, which is perfect for what we'll be doing today. And this is exactly what you saw before as well when I was giving you a preview of the data. So you just have that all those columns right here in front of you. And if you want to understand the data a little bit more and explore it a little bit more, go for it. Take a look at the Google spreadsheet, scroll through it, understand the data more. You can play with it, look at all the columns. I'm not going to spend too much time doing that, but if you want to, you can do that. It's a great way to get started when working per se. Now that we've understood the Power BI interface, the next step we want to take is we want to go ahead and get started with building our first sheet. So what do we want to build on our first sheet? On our first sheet, we basically want to go ahead and build out a page that says our category by sales. So let's get started with building this sheet. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and click on this text box icon in the top right hand area. And I'm basically going to click on it and you'll see I have a text box created on my page canvas. And I'm going to type in category by sales. And once I type that in, I'm going to increase my font size from 10 to let's say 24, because that's slightly bigger. And that's perfect actually. I can even select 28. That's even better. So I'm going to make my font size 28 and there we go. I've made my text box. I'm going to click on Command S to save my work or Control S if you're on Windows. See, I'm getting into the habit and I want you to get into that habit as well. Now, I've gone ahead and made my text box, which says category by sales. My next step is to make my bar chart that shows me the sales for each category. So to build a bar chart, come to the visualizations panel on the right hand side. Look at the first icon, the first column, first row. It says stacked bar chart. That's what we want to be building. So click on stacked bar chart and you'll see you have a bar chart visualization created on your canvas. Just go ahead and drag it to the right hand side and make it much larger than it is right now. Perfect. Once you've done that, you'll see that your bar chart is empty. Why is it empty? It's because we've not decided what data goes into it. So how will we decide what data goes into it? Very simple. First, come to the data panel. We want to go ahead and search for the field called product category. So search for the field called product category. And then what you're going to do is you're going to keep this bar chart visualization selected and you're going to drag product category and you're going to go ahead and place it on your Y axis. Why? Because you want each category name to be present on your Y axis. So if you take a look out here, each category name is on the Y axis. Hence, I'm dragging product category onto that Y axis option. Now, you may tell me, Zosh, I don't go ahead and see any categories out here. So where are they? That's because you've not gone and defined what each bar should represent. So that bar length is basically your X axis, right? So what is that going to represent? That's going to represent my sales in USD. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the field called sales and I'm going to scroll down and you'll see I have the sales in USD. I'm going to drag the sales in USD onto my X axis. And as soon as I do that, I can now see my bars as well as my category names. I'm going to go ahead and now click on command S to save my work. And there you go. You've just built your first visualization with Microsoft Power BI. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and tweak this up. So what are the few tweaks you want to make? Let's assume I want to go ahead and rename my X axis. My X axis right now says sum of sales in USD. Maybe I want to simplify that to just say sales in USD. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll double click on sum of sales in the X axis option and I'll change that to say sales in USD. So just double click on it, remove sum off and just keep it as sales in USD. There you go. It's been renamed. Now, the next step you may want to go ahead and take is you may want to go ahead and add in data labels. What are data labels? Data labels basically tell you the value of each bar. So right now, if you look at this bar chart, it's really difficult for me to go ahead and know the value of, let's say, the kurta bar. Like, is it like 0 0.25 million? Is it 0 0.275 million? I don't know. I'm trying to eyeball it, right? Or even for top, for example, is it 0 0.60? Uh, so is it 0 0.060 million? I have no idea until I hover over it. So in this case, I may want to put a label. That means a label at the start of each bar that tells me that it's value. So to add that label, keep your bar chart selected, come to the visualizations panel. And then what you want to go ahead and do is you want to click on this paintbrush icon. And once you do that, you want to scroll down and you want to see this data labels option. 
And what you want to do is you want to switch it on and now you will see you have a data label for each bar. So now I don't need to eyeball this. I know that this is 0.26 million. I know this is 0.14 million. I know this is 0.07 million, not 0.06 million as I initially assumed. So that's the advantage of adding data labels in. So now that you've gone ahead and made a bar chart, the next thing you may want to go ahead and do is you may want to go ahead and add in a few drop downs for the user to interact with. Let's say you want to add a drop down that allows the user to select the state. So maybe they want to see the most popular categories by a specific state. So they maybe select a state and then they want to see the popular categories and the sales per se generated by those categories. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. Come to the visualizations panel and I want you to focus on the first column, fifth row. You'll see there's an icon, which is a funnel icon. This is what we call as a slicer. A slicer allows the user to slice the data and they're basically saying, I want to only see this specific slice. So they're only saying, I only maybe want to see data for this specific date, right? Or this specific state, for example. So they're only getting that slice. That's why it's called a slicer. So go ahead and click on the slicer icon. Once you do that, come to the data panel. And in the data panel, what we're going to go ahead and search for is the column called state. And I'm going to drag state and I'm going to place it into my field. Now, once I've done that, you'll see I have a list of all the states in India. And that's fantastic. But this list is a little too long for my liking. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make this into a drop down menu instead because it's a little bit overwhelming for a user and they may not always want to go ahead and, you know, see all the states each time. Like you don't need it present all the time, right? You just want to go ahead and click on selecting a state when you need to. Don't always need it. So I'm going to come to the visualizations panel. I'm going to keep the slicer selected and I'm going to go ahead and click on the paintbrush icon. Once I do that, I'll click on the slicer settings and I'm going to change my style from vertical list to a drop down. See how much cleaner it looks now. I'm also then going to go ahead and just reduce the height of my state drop down. And there we go. You've just built your first slicer. Let's go ahead and interact with it. So if I now change my state from all to, let's say, Andhra Pradesh, see how the data updates. If I make it Assam, it updates to Assam. If I make it Bihar, it becomes Bihar. If I make it Chandigarh, it becomes Chandigarh and so on. Now, here's an interesting question I got asked in a session I conducted recently. What if I want to select two states or three states, Zotra? How do I do that? Hold down on the command key or on the control key, and then you can select multiple states and see the data for the same thing. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and deselect it. And there we go. That's your slicer. Now, let's assume you want to make a slicer where the user only wants to see data for a specific time period. How do you go ahead and create that? I'm going to show you how. Come to the data panel. And let's say we want to go ahead and create a slicer for dates, right? So don't actually come to the data panel, my bad. Come to the visualizations panel. And what you want to do is just go to the first column, fifth row and create a new slicer. And once you do that, then come to the data panel and search for order date. Then drag order date, place it in the field option in the visualizations panel. And now you have a nice slicer for order date as well in front of you. Okay. There we go. So now I can go ahead and also filter by order date. So if I go ahead and just slice the data to only see this specific time period, see how the chart automatically updates. That's the advantage of adding these slicers and you can go ahead and get a slice for a specific piece of data you want to see. And you can use two slices at the same time. So if I only want to see data for Andhra Pradesh and I only want to see it for, let's say, maybe a specific time period, maybe from 22nd March onwards to 29th of June, I can go ahead and do that. See, both these slicers have applied, so I'm only getting that specific slice. That's the advantage of creating slices in Microsoft Power BI, okay? Now, that brings us to almost completing our first page. The last step we need to take is we want to come to the bottom bar. We want to rename our page from page one to category by sales. Once you've done this, go ahead and click on Command S or Control S to save your sheet. Now. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and create our second visualization for today. What's the second visualization we'll be creating? We're going to be going ahead and creating a scatter chart. And this scatter chart is going to allow us to explore the relationship between quantity ordered and the average unit selling price for each product. So let's get started with building the scatter chart. Step number one, come to the bottom bar. We need to create a new page. So click on the green plus button out here. Okay, so click on this green plus button. Once you do this, you have a new page created. I'm going to come to the top right hand area. I'm going to click on the text box icon. And after that, I'm going to just type in product by unit selling price and quantity. 
Okay, that's the title. And I'm just going to increase my font size to 28. So it's nice and big. Perfect. Now I'll just go ahead and reduce the size of the text box a little bit. There we go. And I'll save my sheet. I'll save my workbook or my file per se, not sheet. Now, once I've done this, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to build my scatter plot. How will I build my scatter plot? Pretty simple. Step number one, I'm going to come to my visualizations panel and I'm going to go ahead and focus on the third column, third row, and you'll basically see your scatter chart icon. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it better. So this is your scatter chart icon. Go ahead and click on it. Once you've done that, then just go ahead and make your scatter chart nice and big out here. Perfect. And then what you want to go ahead and do is you want to add data into your scatter chart so that you can actually see the data versus just a blank placeholder image of a scatter plot. So let's get started with that. So my, my scatter plot is going to have a Y axis and X axis and dots. Okay. So let's understand, you know, what each of these are in Microsoft Power BI. So your X axis, Y axis, you can see you have these options, right? So on my Y axis, I'll have quantity. On my X axis, I'm going to have my average unit selling price. But what about the dots? What are the dots called in Power BI? They're known as values. And my values are basically going to be my product styles. So come to the data panel and let's get started with adding this data now into the scatter plot. So go ahead and search for product style ID and drag product style ID and place it into your values. You'll initially only see one dot. Do not panic. The minute we add in our data for our X axis and Y axis, you'll see a lot of dots in fact. So once you've done this, then go ahead and search for quantity ordered and drag quantity ordered onto your Y axis. Okay. So you now see you have a lot of dots on your Y axis. Now, next, we're going to go all in a vertical line, not on your Y axis. You have all of them in one vertical line. Now, next up, we want to search for a selling price. So you want to go ahead and drag the unit selling price in USD and you want to go ahead and place it on your X axis. Once you've done that, you'll see that Power BI by default is taking a sum of your unit selling price. We want to take an average of your unit selling price. How do you do that? Very simple. Go to the X axis option in the visualizations panel. You'll see some of unit selling price. Click on the drop down arrow out here. And what you want to do is you want to change from sum to average. So now we have an average of a unit selling price out here and the sum of quantity order. Now, let's say you have a lot of dots out here. Maybe you want to go ahead and understand which category does each product style belong to, right? Each dot is one product style. So like one white t-shirt or like, you know, maybe it's like a white t-shirt with black uh, design on it. Each of those are different product styles, right? But you want to know which categories they belong to. How will you go ahead and represent category out here? You can represent category by using color. So maybe each category gets its own color and that way if the dot belongs to, let's say, the t-shirts category or the, the kurtas category, it gets a green color, a blue color, and so on. So to do this, come to the data panel and just search for category and drag product category and place it on top of legend. Now what you'll see is, you'll see that each category has got its own color dedicated to it. And if you even click on one of these colors, in fact, you'll see it gets highlighted pretty well. I'm just going to double click on it or not double click on it. I'm going to click on it again to deselect, but you can click on a specific color to see it highlighted in the scatter chart. Now, the next thing I may want to go ahead and do is I may want to go ahead and add in zoom sliders to my scatter plot so that I can go ahead and investigate different parts of it. Why would I want to do that? I would want to go ahead and do that because there's so many dots out here that sometimes I may want to investigate different regions individually as a business analyst or even as a professional who's giving it to another leader. They may want to zoom in and investigate different regions individually. So to add a zoom slider, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to come to the visualizations panel. We want to click on the paintbrush icon. And once you do that, you will see there's an option called zoom slider. Just switch it on. And now the user can go ahead and zoom into a specific region by just simply using these handlebars right here. Now let's assume we want to go ahead and zoom into a specific section. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to all products that we've at least sold maybe 500 units of and all products that have an average unit selling price, which is at least below 20 US dollars. Perfect. There we go. As simple as that. And if you want to know the specific style ID for each of these products, we're suggesting the dot. Maybe you want to see that style ID. If you want to add that in, keep your scatter plot selected and then just go ahead and switch on the category label. As simple as that. Now here's a nice feature of Power BI. 
You can also add a background to these labels if you'd like. I'm not going to go ahead and do that because it adds a lot of noise. But if you want to, you can add it in. It's pretty good when you have a background image um, to a scatter plot. We are not adding it in. But if you have a background image or a darker color or a red color to it, then maybe adding that background helps in creating a bit of contrast so you can read your number better. Now, once you've gone ahead and done this, the next step you may want to go ahead and do is you may want to place your legend instead of being on the top. Maybe you want to place it on the right or you want to place it on the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and teach you how to do that because it might be something you want to do. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. Keep your scatter chart selected. Come to the visualizations panel and select legend. And once you select legend, you can change the position from top left, for example, to center right. See how it comes to the center right? I could also go ahead and just put it on the bottom right if I wanted to as well. I just want to go ahead and show you how to use this feature because it's pretty powerful because you may want to sometimes just go ahead and rearrange your legend. Now, the next step I want to go ahead and take is I want to simplify my x-axis and y-axis titles. So how would we do this? Pretty similar to what we did earlier. Come to the visualizations panel. Click on the two rectangles tab. It's also known as the data tab. Once you've done that, just go ahead and rename average of unit selling price to just AVG unit selling price, right? That reads a lot more better as compared to average being a full word and off being another word. This is so much shorter. And just, just go ahead and rename your y-axis. Instead of saying sum of quantity ordered, you can just rename that to quantity ordered. Reads so much cleaner. Now, what we learn from this scatter plot, what we can see out here is that this specific product style, which is basically a Western dress, has sold a lot of units. In fact, it's sold over 3,500 units and it's an average unit selling price of $8.94. What the business owner may realize from here is that, hey, we've sold a lot of units of this specific product. What we can do is we may be able to actually bump up its unit selling price and earn a little bit more profit, in fact, because it's super popular. And we can even see there are actually other products which have not sold as many units, but are a little bit more expensive. So people are buying a little bit more expensive products as well, we can see. So we may want to, the business owner may want to, you know, experiment actually increasing the cost a little bit. They may want to go ahead and decrease the cost. Who knows? Each business operates differently. But now they have the data that gives them this insight so that they can make their decision or make a more well-informed decision per se. Now let's go ahead and say we want to add in some slices out here. Maybe the user wants to go ahead and again, you know, um, slice by date and they want to slice by state. How would they do that? You could be like Zosh, we can just remake the slices. We already know how to do it. We just did it before this. But I'm a really lazy person and I also like some really cool features of Power BI. And one of the really cool features I like of Power BI is syncing visuals based on slicers. So if I go ahead and just copy paste the slices I made in my previous page onto the current page I'm onto, I can actually say sync it up. So if I go ahead and select a specific date range on the previous page, it'll also apply to the current page I'm on. Let's go ahead and understand how this works and take a deeper look now. So let's go ahead and come to our category by sales page, which is going to be in your bottom bar. So click on category by sales. The next step I'm going to take is I'm going to go ahead and select my order date slicer. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and click on command C or control C. Note that this only works on Chrome. It does not work on Safari. So if you're in Safari, it will not work. Okay, so just save your work in Safari and shift to Chrome if you need to do this. So just go ahead and click on command C, copy this slicer, and then come to your page one in the bottom bar and just paste it in. And then now I'm gonna give you a pop-up which says sync visuals. And it says one or more of the copied visuals can stay in sync with the visual it was copied from. Do you wanna keep them in sync? Yes, we wanna keep them in sync. What this is gonna do is if I select a specific date range on this page, it will apply to the other pages as well which use this specific slicer. That's exactly what I want. I want them to be in sync. So I'll click on sync, done. Now let's take a demo of it. If I change my order date to be, let's say, 11th of May to 29th of June, if I come to category by sales now, see how the slicer shows exactly the same date range? That's perfect. We don't need to go ahead and manually adjust it each time we go to different sheets. It's such a great feature of Microsoft Power BI. Now the next thing I wanna go ahead and do is I just want to go ahead and reset my order date filter. So I'm just going to go ahead and extend it from here. I'm just going to again ensure it goes all the way from 1st of April all the way to 29th of June. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to add in a slicer for category. So how will I add in a slicer for category? Simple. Come to the visualizations panel. Look at the first column, fifth row. Click on the slicer icon. You have a slicer right here. Search for category in the data panel, which is on the right hand side. 
and drag product category into the field option in the visualizations panel. Now, right in front of us, we have a nice list of all the categories. I want to make this into a drop down so it's a lot cleaner. So to do this, keep your slices selected, click on the paintbrush icon in the visualizations panel. And once you go ahead and do this, click on slicer settings. And after that, go ahead and change your style from vertical list to a drop down menu. Perfect. Awesome. You've just gone ahead and built your second sheet that tells us our product by unit selling price and quantity. Now I can go ahead and continuously like, you know, just zoom into my data more and more with time. Uh, that's completely fine. You can zoom in, zoom out. I just wanted to go ahead and show this to you. Now let's go ahead and rename this page. Come to the bottom bar, rename it from page one to product by unit selling price and quantity. Okay. Now the third question that we want to answer for Ria today is what are the total orders by time? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sheet from the bottom bar and I'm just going to go ahead and rename this page one to total orders by time. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a text box. So to create a text box, I'm going to come to my top right hand corner and I'm just going to go ahead and select not top hand right hand corner, top right hand area. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the text box option. Once I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and call this total orders by time and I will select my text and I will increase the font size to 28. Now, once I've done that, I'll just reduce the height of my text box. Perfect. Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to make a line chart to show how the total orders have changed over time. So I want to see how it's increased, decreased and so on. Now, to build this line chart, it's pretty simple. Come to the visualizations panel. Click on the line chart icon. There we go. The line chart icons in your first column, second row. Now we've gone ahead, we've added a line chart in, it has no data in it. So what's the first thing that we want to do? We want to add in a date. So to add in a date to your line chart, keep it selected, come to the data panel, and then just go ahead and search for the date column. Then drag order date and place it on top of your X axis. So your date is going to be on your X axis. Perfect. Now you'll be like, Zosh, I don't see any lines. I don't see any dates. What's happening? That's because we now need to add in total orders onto your Y axis. So what you may go ahead and do and your gut instinct may tell you is you got to search for this column called total orders. So you'll come to the data panel and you'll search for total orders and you'll be like, Zosh, there's nothing for total orders. So maybe you search for orders and you're like, Zosh, well, there's nothing for orders either. But how will we then go ahead and show total orders by time? So far, each time we've gone ahead and we've searched for the column and we found it, but now we can't find it. And did you forget to give us the data? No, I did give you the data, but we need to take a slightly different approach to show total orders out here. So what I want you to do instead is I want you to search for order ID. Each order has a unique order ID assigned to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and count the total unique order IDs in a data set and that's going to be our total orders. Let me show you how we will do that. Drag order ID and place it on top of your Y axis. As soon as you do that, it says count of order ID. You'll be like, Zosh, perfect. That's what you wanted, right? Not exactly. What this count is, it's basically counted all the order IDs. So even if an order ID appeared twice or thrice or four times in my data set, each time it appeared, it counted it. But what we want to do is we want to count the total number of unique order IDs in our data set, right? Because for the same order, I may have three rows. If three products were bought, I'll have three rows for them in that order. So for that order per se. So what we want to do is we instead want to take a distinct count. How will I do that? Take your cursor, go to the Y axis option, hover over the arrow for count of order ID. And I want you to go ahead and select count distinct immediately you'll see the values change. You see the line chart gets slightly adjusted because we've now counted the total number of unique orders per se. Now, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to rename count of order ID. So I'm just going to double click on it and I'm going to rename it to total orders. That's a lot more easier for someone to read and understand as compared to what we used earlier. Now, the next thing you may want to go ahead and do is you may want to go ahead and basically, you know, color code this line chart by month. Maybe you want the first line, like which is the first section for April to be one color, the next color for May, the next another color for June. How would you do that? Come to the data panel and just search for month and you can drag month and now place it on top of legend. 
So similarly, what you did for the scatter plot, when you wanted to color code things, you drag it on top of legend. Same thing out here. I'm dragging month and I'm going to drop it on top of legend. And there we go. Now, each month has got its own color. So it's easier to differentiate the months and then see the patterns per se. So what do we notice in the data? We can see in April, our sales like, you know, went up, went down, went up, went down. But there were no drastic drops as compared to what we see in May. In May, we see we have a huge peak and then suddenly our orders go down and then they slowly start to recover as the month progresses. So that's a very interesting insight. And we don't see that pattern again repeating per se immediately in June. But we can notice in June again, it may happen. Like it's not going as the drops are happening as fast, but the drop is happening, which is a pretty interesting insight. So what the business may want to go ahead and do, basically what Ria may want to go ahead and do is she may want to investigate and learn, was there something our business did that led to this problem? Did the customers just not buy things if the business decisions were the same? Maybe we should have done different marketing so she can go ahead and try and understand what happened at that time now that she has these insights. Now, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and basically create a tooltip where if we hover over a specific date, not only can we see the total orders on that date, but we can see the total orders for each category. So I'm now going to teach you how to make this tooltip. It's also known as a pop-up. So to get started with making this tooltip, let's go ahead and come to the bottom bar and click on the plus button to create a new page. Okay. Once you create a new page, we're going to rename it. We're going to go ahead and call it a tooltip. So what is this tooltip going to look like and what is it going to be? It's basically going to look something like this right here. When I showed you the start of the presentation today, you would have seen as I hover over a different day, this pop-up appears. It's going to look just like this. Okay. So to get started, we want to go ahead and just set up our tooltip page. To do this, come to the visualizations panel and click on the paintbrush icon. We're going to take a few special steps steps because this is a tooltip. First, we're going to click on page information and we're going to tell Microsoft Power BI that this page will be used as a tooltip. So we're going to go ahead and switch on the option for allow use as a tooltip. Next, I'm going to go to our canvas settings. You will see that my page size is automatically reduced. That's great because it's a pop-up, but it's a little too short in terms of height. I want it to be slightly longer. So because I want it to be longer, I'm going to change my canvas settings. I'll open it up. And I'll change my type from tooltip to custom. And once I shift to custom, I'm going to make my height 500 pixels. Okay. I could even go for 450 pixels. Actually, 500 is maybe being a little bit too generous. Perfect. Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is I'm just going to save my report just for safety purposes. And right after that, I'm going to create a bar chart. What's my bar chart going to show? It's going to show me my categories and the total orders for each category. So to get started on this, I'm going to go ahead and come to my visualizations panel. I'm going to select the option for add data to your visual. That's the first tab. And once I do that, I'm going to select a stacked bar chart and I'm just going to go ahead and place it in the bottom section of my tooltip. Perfect. Now to this bar chart, I want to go ahead and add in my categories. So I'm going to come to my data panel. I'm going to search for category and then I'm going to drag product category and I'm going to place it on my Y axis. Okay. So I just want to compare the total orders for each category. Now, once I've gone ahead and done that, I then want to represent my total orders on my X axis. How will I do that? I'm going to go ahead and do the similar thing, which I did for my line chart. I'm going to use order ID and I'm going to take a distinct count for it. So come to the data panel, search for order ID and drag order ID on top of your X axis. And you'll see you've got a count of order ID. Note, this is not a distinct count. So what we'll do is we'll take our cursor, we we'll click on the arrow for count on the we'll click on the arrow for count of order ID, and then we're going to change to count distinct. Perfect. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and rename count of order ID to total orders. That's a much better x-axis. And right after that, I'm going to come to my visualizations panel. I'll click on the paintbrush icon, and I'm going to switch on my data label so I know the value for each bar. Perfect. Now you may argue that the Y axis title, which is product category is a little bit too much. It's redundant really, because you know, these are product categories. So if you want to go ahead and switch it off. So if you ever want to go ahead and switch off an X axis or Y axis title, you can do that by simply coming to the visualizations panel, selecting, let's say the Y axis in this case, and then just going ahead and switching off the title for the Y axis to get some extra space in real estate. Perfect. Now I'm going to click on command S to save my work. And the next step I'm going to go ahead and take is I want to go ahead and showcase the date 
as well as the total orders received on that day. So to do this, I'm going to come to my visualizations panel and I'm going to go ahead and create something known as a multi-row card. Why am I creating multi-row card? Because I want to show two pieces of data. I want to show a date and I want to show my total orders. So I'm going to go ahead and select the multi-row card option. That's basically in your fifth column, fourth row. Select the multi-row card and you're just going to go ahead and simply place it in the top section of this tooltip. Okay, you can just make your bar chart a little bit shorter and you can give this a little bit more space for now. Once you've done that, keep your multi-row card selected and then just search for order date and then drag order date on top of fields. That's step number one. You'll see you have your order date, which is 4-1-2022. That's your 1st of April, 2022. And right after that, search for order ID, drag order ID right below order date. Perfect. Now this has gone ahead and got you every order ID for that date, which is what we don't want. So we're going to go ahead and basically click on the arrow for order ID. See how we have the entire order ID? It's on account. So what we want to do is we want to click on the arrow and we want to change it from don't summarize to count distinct. So now for the 1st of April, we can see that we've got 1,363 orders. This is perfect for what we need. I'm going to rename count of order ID to just say total orders. Now, what are you going to tell me is Joshua, I can actually scroll through this and see all the total orders for each date. But I just want to see the total orders for a specific date when I'm hovering over it, right? I don't want to see data for all the dates. Don't worry. I'm going to show you what happens when you're going to use this as a tooltip. So just stay, stick with me, okay? So the last step we want to go ahead and take now is we want to go ahead and ensure that this tooltip appears over my line chart. So when I'm hovering over my line chart, we want this tooltip to appear, right? So what I need to do for this is I need to go ahead and tell Power BI that whenever a user hovers over a date, go ahead and show this tooltip. So to get started with this, come to your data panel. I want you to go ahead and search for date. Have no other visualization selected. And then I want you to then drag your order date into the tooltip section, in the visualization panel. So what's happening out here? We are basically telling Microsoft Power BI that whenever a user hovers over order date, show this specific tooltip. Let's take a look at it in action now. I'm going to come to my total orders by timesheet. And now when I hover over a specific date, you see how the line chart updates. And now notice you cannot scroll through it. You don't have all the dates being shown. It only shows you that specific date. So what's happening is Microsoft Power BI is super smart that it knows that you're hovering over a specific date and it only shows you the data related to that specific date. So it's filtering down, okay? So it's not showing you the data for all the dates. So that's how you make a tooltip in Microsoft Power BI. Now, one important thing to note is that you may not want your user, which is Rhea, to see this tooltip as she's going through this report. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm gonna hide this tooltip page. To hide it, I'm just gonna to come to my bottom bar and I'm gonna right click on my tooltip and I'm gonna say hide page so that it does not appear in the actual final product. Perfect. Now the next step I want to go ahead and take is I want to make a table that shows us the shipment status for each order and the total orders for that basically. So I want to see how many total cancel orders, how many shipped orders, how many returns and so on. So to make this table, what I need to go ahead and do is I need to come to my visualizations panel. I'll come to my visualizations panel. I'll ensure I have no other visualizations selected. And then I'm going to come to my second column, fifth row, and I'm going to select the table option. Once I've done that, I'm going to come to my data panel and I'm going to search for status and I'm going to drag order status and that's going to be my first column. Why am I doing this? So that I can basically see the total orders for each order status. Now, once I've done that, I want to see the total orders. So I'm going to come to my data panel. I'm going to search for order ID, which I'm going to basically take a unique count of, a distinct count of. So I'm going to drag order ID. I'm going to place it into my columns and you're going to basically see the order ID for each canceled order, each returned order and so on. That's not what we want. So what we'll go ahead and then do is we'll come to our visualizations panel and we'll take our cursor, we'll hover over the arrow for order ID and we'll change from don't summarize to count distinct. Now, this table is a little bit too narrow, so I'm just gonna increase its width. But now we can go ahead and see the total orders for each type of order status. Now, next step I'm going to go ahead and take is I'm going to rename count of order ID to just say orders. And now my table has already become more narrow, which is perfect and exactly what we need. Now I'm going to place this table in the bottom section of my page. So bottom left, 
and it looks about right out here. Perfect. Now, what I want to go ahead and do as a last step is I want to sort this data always in descending order. So I want to see my highest to lowest. So I'm going to go ahead and sort in descending order of the orders column. So just go ahead and click on the orders column header and now it's sorted. And one last step actually, which you may want to take is you may also want to go ahead and style this table differently. I actually just want to show you this feature of Power BI so that you know you can style your tables differently. So just keep your table selected, come to the visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush icon, and then go ahead and select style presets and change from default to alternating rows. There we go. So you can change the style of the table. You can also change it to, let's say, sparse. You can go ahead and change it to condensed, you know, whichever style you like the most. Let's say if you like sparse, you can use sparse. If you like alternating rows, use alternating rows, which is what I will use today. Then go ahead and click on Control S, Command S, save your work. Now, the last few steps that we need to take is that we want to go ahead and basically add in a few filters. What are the filters or slicers we want to add in? The user should be able to basically select product category, state, and order date. Now, we've actually gone ahead and made each of these three slicers earlier, so we can easily copy paste them into this page. How will we do that? Come to the previous page you created, which is product by unit selling price and quantity. And then what I want you to do is hold down on the shift key on your keyboard. So hold down on the shift key on your keyboard and select your order date slicer, select your state slicer and select the product category slicer. So when you hold down on shift, you can select multiple slicers at the same time or multiple data visualizations as well. After that, click on command C to copy it or click on control C if you're on Windows and then come to total orders by time and then just go ahead and click on command V or control V and paste this in. And it's gonna go ahead and ask you, do you wanna sync these visuals? Yes, of course we wanna sync these visuals to make this a much better user experience for everyone who's using it. So I'll click on sync and then I'll just go ahead and place my slices more towards the top. Okay, perfect. Awesome. We've gone ahead and made a third sheet. Now we have to make a final dashboard of the day which is basically a sales dashboard, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and allow the user, which is Rhea, to select a specific product and then get to see a variety of different insights. This is gonna be super fast because now you're super familiar with Power BI. It's not gonna take you as much time to make as compared to what it's taken us before. So let's get started. Come to the bottom bar, create a new page. Step one, perfect. Then we're gonna rename this page to Product Analysis Dashboard. Once you've done that, come to the top right hand area, select the text box icon. You've created a text box. We're going to go ahead and call this product analysis dashboard. Select the text, increase its font size to 28. Perfect. Now, the next step I want to go ahead and take is I want to go ahead and allow the user to select a specific product style. So if the user wants to get insights maybe about a specific product style, such as a white t-shirt or maybe let's say uh, a black kurta which is selling or maybe a blue kurta or maybe a black blouse or maybe a I'm, why am I only thinking of black colors but you're getting the point right you select a specific product style so to get started with that come to the visualizations panel and what I want you to do is I want to go ahead and come to the, my first column fifth row and select a slicer it's basically going to be a drop down from which they can select a specific product now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll search for product style ID and I'll drag product style ID and I'll place it into my field. Now what you'll notice out here is I have a lot of codes in front of me, right? Now I can go ahead and make this a drop down menu. So pretty simple. Keep the slicer selected, come to your visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush icon, click on slicer settings and change your style from vertical list to drop down. Simple, right? Now here's the problem. As I start to scroll through this, this is a pretty long list. As a user, they may want to actually just see the product style IDs by product category. So they may want to first see the product category and then see the product style ID because it's easier to then scan. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to come to my data panel and I want to search for category. And then I'm going to come to my visualizations panel. I'm going to select the first tab and I'm going to drag product category. And I'm going to place it into field, but not below style ID, but above style ID. So what this does is that now when I select my drop down menu, I can then go ahead and see the product style IDs for each category versus seeing all product IDs uncategorized, very overwhelming. It's a little bit more organized and structured. Perfect. Now, the next thing you may want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and specifically start adding some visualizations in. 
So let's say Ria wants to see the total quanti quantity of a specific style ID ordered over time. What will we build for that? We'll build a line chart. So to get started with that, come to the visualizations panel and then come to your first column, second row, click on the line chart icon and just make a nice line chart out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then come to our data panel and we'll search for order date. I'm going to drag order date. I'm going to place it on top of our X axis because date is going to be on our X axis. And then on my Y axis, I'm going to search for quantity. I'm going to drag quantity ordered from the data panel. I'm going to place it on top of my Y axis. So now I can see how the quantity ordered by time has changed. Okay, so we can see for this specific product style, if I select one, maybe if I, let's say AN201, or maybe you'll select another product, maybe something a little bit more popular. Maybe you'll go to Kurtas because I know that's a popular category. So I'll go to Kurtas and I'll maybe select a particular product style ID. Maybe J0. Let's see. Hmm, there's no particular interesting one. Okay, let's go for this one, for example. Okay, or here. J0139. This is a pretty interesting line chart, right? I can see my sum of quantity ordered by order date, which is exactly what I wish to see. Perfect. Now, the next thing I may want to go ahead and do and actually, I think I know why this is happening. Let me just go ahead and deselect Kurta. And now let me just select one of these. Ah, okay, this one works well. J0094. Perfect. Now, I can now see how the orders have changed over time. So I can see basically like, you know, on certain days I've had more than two orders. Some days I've even gone above four orders. She gets these unique insights. Perfect. Now, I also want to keep my line chart selected. And I again want to do that same color coding thing which I did earlier in my line chart. So I'm going to go ahead and search for month in the data panel. I'm going to drag month and I'm going to place it on top of my legend so I can easily differentiate the months. The next step I want to take after this is I want to go ahead and rename my y-axis. It says sum of quantity ordered. I'm just going to rename this to say quantity ordered. So much cleaner and easier to read per se versus sum of quantity ordered. Perfect. Now. The next step after that is I want to go ahead and basically see a bar chart to identify what are my most popular sizes for the specific style ID. So I'm going to come to my visualizations panel. I'm going to just create a bar chart. Okay. And I'm, once I create my bar chart, I'm just going to increase its height. I'm going to place it below the line chart. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come to my data panel. I'm going to search for a size and I'll drag product size. I'll place it on top of my Y axis and I'll also search for quantity ordered and I'll drag quantity ordered onto my x-axis. So what we can see out here is the medium category has got the most amount of orders, right? So basically that's the most ordered um, like size. Then we have XL, then we have XXL, then we have L, then we have S, then we have XS and 3XL and so on. So what we know is this can help with inventory management for Rhea. If she notices this particular product and wants more insight, she can get to understand, you know, what's the most popular size and so on. Now, one thing which we may want to go ahead and do out here for this bar chart is we may want to go ahead and add in data labels. So how will I add in data labels? Come to the visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush and switch on data labels. And the last thing I want to go ahead and do is I'll come back to my first tab. And I'm going to rename my x-axis from quantity order to just from sum of quantity order to just say quantity ordered. Perfect. Now, I want to go ahead and see the total quantity ordered for this specific style ID by state. Now, you may go ahead and say, Zoshua, you've been using bar charts to make comparisons, right? So we need to make one out here. Let's do that and let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and make a bar chart. Don't do this with me. Just watch, okay? Don't do this with me. I'm going to go ahead and make a bar chart. And when I make my bar chart out here, let's say I go ahead and simply like, you know, make its width a little bit bigger. And let's say I go ahead and quickly search for state. And I drag state, I place it on top of my y-axis and I go ahead and I search for, let's say, my quantity and I place it on top of my x-axis. We get this line chart, but what you notice out here is you need to do a lot of scrolling, right? And this is because India has 28 states. USA has 50 states. And what you'll notice is there's a lot of white space out here. There's basically a specific set of states that order a lot. And there's a specific set of states that don't order too much. So if you want to just quickly identify what are the states that are ordering a lot versus the states that are not ordering too much, you may want to use something as a tree map instead because that occupies lesser screen real estate. You don't need to do any scrolling in it. So I'm going to now teach you how to make a tree map and you'll see the immediate value of it as well as compared to this bar chart. So to make a tree map, come to your visualizations panel. Do this with me. Come to the visualizations panel. 
And then what I want you to do is come to your sixth column, third row and click on the tree map icon. It's basically all these rectangles put together to make a grid kind of icon. And then what you want to go ahead and do is you want to drag this tree map and you want to place it below your line chart nicely. Perfect. Now to my tree map, I need to go ahead and search for state in my data panel. And I then need to drag my state and I'm going to place it on top of my category option in the visualizations panel. So now you'll see that Zosh, my tree map's empty. Very similar to what we did earlier. We now need to add in some data. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to search for quantity ordered. I'm going to drag quantity ordered into values. And there we go. We now have a tree map that shows me that for this specific style ID, Kerala has been the most popular state, right? They've had the highest quantity ordered. Then Maharashtra, then Gujarat, then Delhi, then Karnataka, then Telangana, and so on. Now, what I want to do after this is I want to go ahead and add in my category labels out here. Because I don't know what's the quantity ordered by Kerala, the quantity ordered by Maharashtra, and so on. So keep your tree map selected. Click on the paintbrush icon and switch on your data labels. Not category labels, switch on your data labels. My bad. Perfect. Now, we've gone ahead and we've provided Ria with quite a few insights so she can see how her sales have changed over time with respect to quantity ordered. She can go ahead and see the popular states for the specific style ID and she can see the popular sizes as well. Now, the last thing we want to do is, well, not last thing, the second last thing we want to go ahead and do in this specific sheet is we want to go ahead and give some high level metrics per se for Ria about the specific style ID that she selected. So she may want to know what are the total quantities sold? What's the average unit uh, selling price? She may want to know, let's say, what's the total sales? So we want to go ahead and provide her with these insights. So to do this, what I'll do is I'll first deselect my visualizations. So I have no visualizations selected. And then I'll come to my visualizations panel. I'm going to then go ahead and select my multi-row card visualization. Why am I doing that? It's because I want to show a lot of numbers in the top area. So I want to show a lot of numbers out here. And a multi-row card is perfect for that. So I'm going to come to my visualizations panel, come to the fifth column, fourth row, select the multi-row card. I'll just zoom in so you can see the icon well. This is a multi-row card icon. And now I'm going to place my multi-row card in the top section. And I'm just going to increase its width and decrease its height. Perfect. Now I'm going to come to my data panel. I'm just going to quickly add in my high level metrics. So I'm going to just drag my sales in USD to fields. So now we can see some of sales in USD. Perfect. I'm then going to go ahead and drag quantity ordered. So I can see my quantity ordered. So you can see 93 orders were placed. And then I can also go ahead and search for my unit selling price in USD, which is the second one. I'm going to drag unit selling price. I'm going to place it below. And for this specific metric, I'm going to take an average. I want to see my average unit selling price. I don't want to see a sum of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow and I'm going to go ahead and select average so that I can see an average of my unit selling price. Perfect. I may want to go ahead and rename these just to make it shorter labels. Like these are really long labels. So I'll just go ahead and come to my visualizations panel. I'll rename some of sales to just say sales in USC. I'll re rename some of quantity order to just say quantity ordered. And I'll rename average of unit selling price to just say AVG, period, unit selling price. So it's shorter and neater. Now, the next step I'm going to go ahead and take is I want to make my numbers slightly bigger so that they stand out. So I'll keep my multi-row card selected. I'll come to my visualizations panel. And now I'll click on the paintbrush icon. I'll select my callout values, which is basically my numbers. And I'm going to make my callout values, let's say font size of 20. See how it stands out? Perfect. Now I've realized I have a little bit of real estate at the top. So I'm going to reduce the height of my multi-row card. I'll push my line chart a little bit more towards the top and I'll just increase the height of my tree map and my bar chart because they seemed a little small earlier. So let me just increase the height of my bar chart. Perfect. Okay. And I can also go ahead and just drag this line chart a little bit up. Okay, this looks nice and neat. Now I'll click on Command S, Control S. And we've almost finished building this dashboard out. The last few steps that we need to go ahead and take is we want to go ahead and add in an order date slicer. So to do that, come to the total orders by timesheet, which we created earlier. Select the order date slicer. Command C or Control C on Windows. Click on the product analytics dashboard page. And then just paste the slicer in. Sync the visuals. And just place your order date slicer below product category. 
and product style ID. So now the user can select a specific product style ID and they can get to see different insights. Okay. Now let's say they go ahead and not select kurta. Maybe they go ahead and instead select a kurta set. Uh, maybe we go ahead and maybe select, let's say, J022 or J033 or J044. We get these unique insights. Perfect. Awesome. Now, we've gone ahead and finished building this report for Ria. We now need to deliver it to her. So how are we going to deliver it? The first thing I want you to do is I want you to come to my category by sales page. So that's your first page. After that, what I want you to do is click on Control S to Command S and then come to the top left hand area. You'll see this option called File. And I want you to click on File and I want you to go ahead and select Publish to Web. What we're going to do is we're going to publish this report to the web. If you are not using a company account or an education account, sometimes you may not be able to publish your report. Don't panic. You can also export this as a PDF. It may not be interactive, but it's still good for a portfolio project. Okay. So if you want to show someone that you built this, you can export it as a PDF and show an example of, hey, this is what I've made per se. But if you wanted to share it with an actual stakeholder, you definitely don't have to pay for Power BI Pro or you need to go ahead and like, you know, have an account that allows you to do it. Sometimes companies don't allow you to publish your work online. In this case, we can do it. So that's great. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on create embed code. I'll select published. And now I've got this public URL through which Ria can see the insights for her business. So now she can notice that Kurta set is the most popular category by sales, followed by Kurta, Western dress and top. She can then navigate to the next page using the arrows in the bottom bar. She can go ahead and notice that this specific product cell called GNE3797 has sold the most amount of units okay, in terms of quantity ordered. And its average unit selling price is actually in the middle of our overall, you know, unit selling price range. So she may want to consider increasing the unit selling price or decreasing it. It's up to her how she wants to go ahead and make those decisions. Next up, she can do that, by the way, for each, you know, um, style listed. Next up, she can also see how her total orders by time has changed. She notices specifically in May that there was a sudden drop. So she can go ahead and investigate what business decision she took that changed this. Or was it specifically, you know, just a customer behavior change and then she can realize how they can maybe tweak the marketing, how they can re-engage customers and they can buy products again. And then she can also go ahead and come to the product analysis dashboard where she can go ahead and sp select a specific product if she wants to. So maybe she goes ahead and selects, let's say J022. She can go ahead and get insights just about that. And then she can also go ahead and like, you know, filter by state. So she only wants to see statistics about Telangana or maybe statistics about Maharashtra or maybe about a specific size, or maybe about a specific, like, let's say, um, date, she can get all of those unique insights. Let's say, like, a specific date. There we go. Perfect. So you've now built your report for Ria, and you can share it with her. If you want to go ahead and just export this as a Power BI PDF, I'm just going to show you how to do that. I'm going to exit out of this pop-up, and then come to the file option in the left-hand corner. And I'm just going to go ahead and select, let's say, you know, export to PDF, if I want to export it as PDF. So there you go. Today you've learned Microsoft Power BI. You learn how to create a variety of different visualizations. You learn how to build bar charts, line charts, scatter plots, advanced tool tips. You learn how to go ahead and create slicers. You also learned how to publish to the web. This is a perfect start to your data visualization career with Microsoft Power BI. And not only this, you can also access the data visualization on your mobile phone using the Power BI app. Now, I just want to conclude with a few next steps as to what you should be doing and what you can do. So definitely go ahead and share this report in your LinkedIn. Let people in your network know that you've been learning Microsoft Power BI recently. Add this project to your portfolio and resume. Send it to your friends. Send it to your parents. Ask questions of your own to the data. Build more charts. Try playing with other data sets on Microsoft Power BI. You can find data sets on Kegel.com, for example. And if you want to learn a lot more about Power BI, definitely check out the Power BI learning website. They have a lot of great free tutorials for you. And... Go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have questions about Power BI, if you appreciated this video, go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to us and do follow Dubstick on Instagram. We post about all our upcoming certification programs, workshops, hackathons and talks. So if you're interested in learning more and having some more such events contribute to your life, definitely follow us on Instagram. Do join our Discord. We'll put a link to it in the chat. 
and also do go ahead and join the Design Buddies Discord. They're the largest design community in the world with over 18,000 plus members. So it's a great place to meet other like-minded designers who are designing and building dashboards just like yourself. And we also have a Tableau Geoanalytics Workshop which will be uploading to YouTube very soon as well as a Power BI Health Analytics Workshop as well which you'd really appreciate. And you can also view some of our past workshops on our YouTube channel. So thank you so much. If you have a question, go ahead and comment down below in the YouTube chat or connect with me on LinkedIn. Take care and have a nice day. Bye. Cheers.